Today we have two youth delegates in our Media Box Plateau. Welcome to our Media Box. Firstly, we have Nina Panikova from Slovakia and Lena Vibiralova from Czech Republic. Uh, I would like to start with uh, Panikova. Uh, could you please tell briefly about your organization and what you do for youth participation in Congress? Well, thank you for giving me the possibility to take part in this media box interview. Well, um, at the moment I'm based in Vienna. I work for the uh, European Union Fundamental Rights Agency. Well, I'm a trainee there. So the organization basically is the agency of the European Union which deals with the fundamental rights and within its mandate it actually it issues a uh, research and uh, advices to the EU institutions. At the same time, I take part in the uh, Environment Forum, which is the uh, a local organization based in my university town in Banská Bystrica. What I do for the young participation in uh, in this congress, basically, I would like to make sure that the young people in the Europe, they uh, also they say because they are the very ones who are important in the local local places in our cities and municipalities and who actually going to govern there in the, in the future. So I really wish for us to have a say here. Uh, Thank you and, very much. <laughs> and uh, Lena, you represent your country, uh, Czech Republic, I yes. in the Congress uh, delegation, youth exactly. delegation. And uh, what are you doing in Czech Republic, your activities mm -hmm. and your participation to the youth uh, yes. delegation? Yeah. Well, at this very moment, I'm a still a student. I study international relations. And at my university, I'm the founder and at this moment, academic coordinator of UN Youth Led Organization. Uh, we are trying to promote the values of democracy and human rights between youth. Uh, we organize different conferences, lectures, and uh, we aim at uh, kind of encouraging young people to participate actively in society, uh, either through such events as we are hosting or through engagement with local and regional authorities. And here at the Congress, uh, as you said, we are representing youth and we are very happy and proud about it that the Congress gave us this opportunity so that the youth can be heard, uh, our voices matter, and we can help the Congress to decide on the matters which are very close to our hearts. And I think it's your first time in Council of Europe and Congress uh, session, maybe. What did you experience uh, during this uh, session? Well, if I, if I can start, <laughs> for me it's a really interesting experience because for me Congress represents a really peculiar body in the sense that it connects the international level with the local level. Therefore, like what I find really important these days is basically when, when sometimes the national level is being stuck in uh, some processes that cannot actually implement the, the strategies, then the local level becomes to be more important. How to transpose the international level conventions or any kind of agreements right to the people and give them rights at the same time. So for me it was really interesting also put together like um, diverse groups of people coming from 47 member states which I find really interesting because being based now in the EU agency like 47 is for me more exciting than 28 mm -hmm. <laughs> and also it connects all of the European countries which I think it's fair also these days when we tackle like the refugee or asylum policy crisis and we need countries also outside of the EU to cooperate. Elena, what about you? Did you have a chance to exchange of view with other youth delegates? So what are yes. your experiences? Uh, I have to say that I think that I speak on behalf of all youth delegates that we are very thankful and happy for being here uh, for this opportunity because during the last days we could hear the opinions on the topics which really matter for us and for whole Europe in general. For example, back in my country I work as a coordinator of Amnesty International and hearing the topics of refugee crisis or transparency, uh, I must say that it made actual impact and uh, like we already mentioned the fact that we could actually take part in all these proceedings and uh, we could make our voices be heard, it's a very unique and I think that the Congress uh, and in general Council of Europe is doing an amazing job in this regard. And Nina, maybe also, I'm sure that you know also that Congress discussed the report on local and regional democracy in Slovakia. Uh, and we, this really uh, briefly mentioned the discrimination with regard to schooling of Roma in Slovakia. What is the situation now in, from that point in Slovakia? And what would you like to say about this report of the Congress? 
Well, I've, I've read the report. Thank you, the, uh, the rapporteurs and the monitors, for drafting it. At the same time, uh, um, the discrimination of the Roma children has always been present in Slovak society since I remember from after the fall of communism in 1989. It has been a problem, especially in the eastern parts of Slovakia, where the concentration of Roma people within our communities is higher than the other parts of Slovakia. Mm, the problem, basically, which has been now also noticed, I need to say finally, also from the side of the EU, which uh, launched the infringement procedure against Slovakia in uh, last year, in 2015, with regard to discrimination of Roma children, which are being based in the schools for the men with children with mental disabilities, even though they are not mentally disabled. Basically, this is one of the problems. The other problem is like that being created, uh, especially in the Roma settlements in uh, in eastern part of Slovakia, the schools which, which are full only of Roma people. And yeah, this is the other problem which may amount to segregation at the same time. Uh, well, this situation, as I said, was recognized by the EU Council of Europe, has done tremendous jobs when it comes to, uh, when it comes to pointing out this issue. But there must be a lot of to be done at the same time. But there are also a public defender of rights. Also, many civil society organizations are are lobbying or advocating for this issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm really happy that it has been recognized within the report, which is going to be presented now in the Congress. But as I actually had a look at the report, and maybe I was thinking about having an intervention during the during the report mm, reporting back of the monitors to say that this issue should be highlighted because it was not included into recommendation. It was just rec uh, including into separate part of the report, which was pointing out to human rights and discrimination. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would like to also call for monitors to more precisely scrutinize also the human rights breaches at the local level mm -hmm. when it comes to either the youth mm -hmm. or also in people in general. Elena, what do you think about uh, the inclusion of Roma people and Roma students uh, to the society especially? What do you think about the role of the civil society, local authorities for that point? Yes, uh, as for this case, I think that it is necessary to take a holistic approach as the issue is holistic in general because it has been prevalent in many European countries, not just Slovakia, but Czech Republic, Romania, uh, for dozens of years. And uh, just to mention briefly uh, what Congress has done now uh, to react to Nina. Uh, we had the opportunity to hear that there will be a report uh, on a Roma inclusion and Roma situation, so we are very happy about this. However, like I said, uh, it needs a holistic approach, civil society, it needs NGOs, it needs national strategies to be actually implemented, because in many countries it is not the case, and the work of international organizations. We must realize that it starts with education, the vicious circle because if children are dropping out of schools or are put into schools which are not suitable for them, then it leads to unemployment, bad housing and other issues, social economic. So I personally do believe that civil society has an important say on this issue and I would say two terms. It should be communication and active participation. We should actually engage with Roma societies and Roma communities, try to create an active dialogue, awareness campaigns, because this is the only way how we can connect it together. And we should aim at empowerment. We shouldn't focus on victimization, but empowerment of Roma people by their own actions. We can mention, for example, pro programs which are trying to do research where Roma people and researchers cooperate to create better implementation of policies so that everyone is engaged and everyone can benefit. I do believe that the civil society, first of all, should try to tackle stigmatization because that's one of the most important issues. So dialogue and the programs which are trying to connect communities are the key. Nina and Lena, thank you for joining us on our Media Box. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>